Hello everyone and welcome back to yet another video. When it comes to GPU manufacturing, to this date, the space is still dominated by AMD and Nvidia. Looks like Intel might be up to something in the coming months, but let's cross our fingers for them. Today's video is the first in the legacy GPU battle series, so be sure to hit that subscribe button so you won't miss any future uploads. The year was 2007. Tesla just unveiled their first generation of the Roadster, the Q6600 won the Best Processor Award and Steve Jobs introduced World to First and the original iPhone. And around this time, Nvidia released the revised 8800 GT. This Tesla-based G92 was manufactured on the shrinked 65nm process node, which promised better thermals that of the G80 sat directly between the GTS and the GTX versions of the 8800 lineup of cards, GPU runs 600MHz clock on the core and the 512MB of GDDR3 memory runs at 900MHz. This card launched for 349 USD. AMD, on the other hand, a month later, in November of 2007, released the Radeon HD 3870. The Terascale RV670 was their first chip to be manufactured using the now 55nm process node. Not hugely different from the R600 it replaced, the GPU core shrinked nearly by half whilst being more efficient, along with the introduction of ATI's power play. This card features 777MHz core clock and a unique GDDR4 memory that runs at 1126MHz. Its launch price was 269 USD. Let's ask the obvious, who is going to win this battle? Will the more expensive 8800 GT win or is it going to be the more efficient HD 3870 that's going to take it? Well, let's find out. Before we jump into any testing, let's first compare the cards. The 8800 GT is a single slot card, requires one 6-pin power connector and has two DVI and one S video output. The design of this card is very simple and subtle. Just a quick side note, we've covered the HD3870 on the channel before. Please find the link in the description below. Being dual slot, the HD3870 feels a bit more weighty than the 8800 GT. I personally much prefer the cool design of this Sapphire version of this card, but will you agree? Let me know what you think of the design in the comments below. Similarly to 8800 GT, this card also requires just one 6-pin power connector and will offer two DVI and one S-Video for output. When compared side by side, the size difference is clearly visible, making the 8800 GT more suitable for smaller or tighter cases. You know the drill, let's take them both apart, starting with the 8800 GT. There are 12 spring-loaded screws holding the PCB and the cooler and it is very easy to take apart. Just a little wiggle and the cooler will separate. There are thermal pads to help keep memory temps in check and the cooler is impressively compact. The thermal paste, to my surprise, was not actually dry even after all those years. Now the HD3870, which is held together by just four screws and this retention GPU bracket. This has to be one of the easiest GPUs to take apart. Comparing coolers of both cards, being dual slot design, the AMD cooler has noticeably more weight to it. Maybe it's thanks to the huge chunk of copper that simply covers just the GPU core. The 8800's cooler is more complex and we can see the copper is also used around the GPU core for better thermals, but it also needs to soak in all of the heat from the memory modules, unlike on the AMD card where a fat chunk of copper simply sits on top of them. The fan is noticeably smaller when compared to AMD's cooler, which makes me wonder, how does the two compare not just for thermals, but also for noise levels? We will get to that in a moment. The 8800 has slightly higher rated TDP of 125 watts compared to 106 for the HD 3870. Let's now apply fresh thermal paste and put those cards together before we can begin with some testing.
Let's see how the two compare for noise levels using my sound level meter that's positioned near the test bench. First, let's hear the idle to 100% fan speed, then a typical gaming load. The 8800 GT does unfortunately produce this unpleasant, whiny noise. The HD 3870, with its larger fan, will produce significantly more noise when at full speed, but remains not only to be more silent under the load, but also producing more acceptable kind of noise, if there even is such thing. As for thermals, the 8800 GT peaked at 84 degrees Celsius, AMD remained at much cooler 63 degrees. The total system power consumption averaged 149 watts for the 8800 GT and 133 watts for the HD 3870. Last couple of notes before the battle begins, and throughout today's and future testing, and obviously where applicable, I've decided to use a custom fan curve using the MSI Afterburner. Both cards are running the latest available drivers, which are version 342.01 for the 8800 GT and 13.1 for the HD 3870. And these are the settings I've used to run Heaven Benchmark if you wish to run this yourself. But enough of talking, let's go! With both cards running at stock clock speeds, the 8800 GT pushed harder and manages to win, scoring 282 points, which is up by 22% from the HD 3870's 230 points. Applying a 10% overclocked pushed the scores to 254 and 308, following the 22% lead we saw previously by the 8800 GT. Further pushing the clocks by 15%, we saw a minor increase to 262 and 324 points respectively, but again, this round easily goes to the 8800 GT. Moving from synthetic benchmarks to play some games, we first tried 2007's Bioshock. This game is hours of great fun and excellent sound effects and I would recommend it to everyone. Running the game at 1080p with high graphical preset, I saw virtually identical experience. However, looking at the numbers, the 8800 GT managed nearly 94 FPS on average, beating the HD 3870 by 26%. The 1 and 0.1 values are nearly identical, and both of the cards would deliver a smooth 60 FPS experience. But, needless to say, the 8800 GT takes a clear win here. Good to know that the 512 megabytes of memory will possess no bottleneck with this game. CSGO was next, and although we know this game is CPU bound, I ran it at 1080p with medium quality graphical preset and 4 times MSA enabled. Both cards ran ok, but the frame time was easier to cope with on the 8800 GT. Yet another sweeping clean victory for the Team Green. Pushing 45 FPS on average, the 8800 GT managed to beat the HD 3870 by over 40%, and the 1 and 0.1 lows are considerably better too. This game could use more VRAM if it was available. Hmm, this is not looking good for AMD, is it? But let's move on. Original Crisis was up next and here, using the high graphics quality preset, results were much closer, yet still in favour of the 8800 GT. The average was nearly 26 FPS, up by just 12% from AMD card. This result clearly shows how demanding this title really is. Let's just see when can we achieve 60 FPS. This game also calls for more than 512 megabytes of VRAM.
The next game tested was 2008's Dead Space. First in the series, this game offers truly amazing soundtrack and gave me quite a few jump scares. Again, using the high preset, both cards had no problem to push over 60 FPS on average, but the 8800 GT takes it with 95 FPS on average, beating the HD3870 by a huge 37% lead. Game Engine is happy with the amount of VRAM that's present. And the last game we tested today was GTA 4. Using the medium preset, we saw an average of 33 FPS with both cards, but for the first time, the point lows are better on the HD 3870, so let's just give this one to the team red. As we know, this game is a mess. Frame time was all over the place, and the game would happily take more than 512 megabytes of video RAM. Okay, I think we've done it. Let's just recap today's testing and close on with a conclusion. It's quite obvious from the testing that the 8800 GT is more powerful and quicker of the two. Pushing more frames and being more consistent, this is a no-brainer. But, needless to say, there's always more to a card than just the frames per second it can achieve in a particular title. The launch price difference was huge, with the 8800 GT costing whopping 30% more than the HD 3870. Say, if we put this into value perspective, that leaves the 8800 GT with 0.83 FPS per dollar, and 0.86 FPS per dollar for the HD 3870. Then, there's the thermals and noise levels, which are both significantly better with the AMD cards, although at the cost of the form factor. A small advantage with the 3870 is also the support for DirectX 10.1, which is not found on the 8800, which only does DirectX 10. Both cards can be had at fraction of the launch price, however, at the time of making of this video, the 8800 GT can be had for around £20 or €25 USD, and the more common HD 3870 for about £25 or about €30. USD. And that's all I had for you today. I would really appreciate your feedback and please, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the like button and consider subscribing, as it somewhat justifies the time I spend making content for this channel. Did you ever had either of the cards? What do you think of the results? Be sure to leave a comment down below. And get ready, up next we have some dual GPU cards from both teams competing for the next week's crown. Thanks very much for watching and I hope to see you all in the next one.